Today we're going to be looking at infrared spectroscopy. The following are instrumental methods of structure and determination. One of them is the nuclear magnetic resonance or NMR. The excitation of the nucleus of atoms through radio frequency radiation provides extensive information about molecular structure and atom connectivity. Infrared spectroscopy or IR it triggers molecular vibrations through irradiation with infrared light, provides mostly information about the presence or absence of certain functional groups. Mass spectrometry, which is the bombardment of the sample with electrons and detection of resulting molecular fragments. It provides information about molecular mass and atom connectivity. And last, the ultraviolet spectroscopy, the UV, which is a promotion of electrons to higher energy levels through irradiation of the molecule with ultraviolet light provides mostly information about the presence of conjugated pi systems and the presence of double and triple bonds. Infrared spectroscopy deals with the interaction of infrared radiation with matter. The IR spectrum of a compound can provide infor important information about its chemical nature and molecular structure. Most commonly, the spectrum is obtained by measuring the absorption of IR radiation, although infrared emission and reflection are also used. Widely applied in the analysis of organic materials, also useful for polyatomic inorganic molecules and for organometallic compounds. The electromagnetic radiation is a radiant energy having dual properties of both waves and particles. Particles of electromagnetic radiation are called photons, and each has a discrete amount of energy called a quantum. Electromagnetic radiation can be characterized by its wavelength and frequency. Wavelength by the letter lambda, is the distance from one point on a wave to the same point on an adjacent wave. Frequency is the number of waves passing per unit time. It is reported in cycles per second, seconds to the minus one, which is also called hertz. Energy, or E, is directly proportional to frequency and inversely proportional to the wavelength. Here we show the effect of the electromagnetic radiation on molecules. You can see that the energy, as the energy increases, the wavelength, which is measured in centimeters, decreases. The energy in kilocalories per mole also increases. And here are the following effects. X-rays cause ionization. Near UV light causes electronic transitions. Also the visible light. Infrared radiation promotes molecular vibrations. Microwave promotes rotational motion, and radio frequency promotes nuclear spin transitions. The different forms of electromagnetic radiation make up the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light occupies only a small region of the electromagnetic spectrum, from 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers. Here are some equations related to electromagnetic relations. We have lambda as the wavelength. We have the frequency, we have C as the speed of light, we have E as the kinetic energy, and we have H as a Planck's constant. Here we show what lambda represents on the wave. The infrared radiation has a lambda from 2.5 to 17 micrometers and a frequency of 4,000 to 600 centimeters over one. These frequencies match the frequencies of covalent bond stretching and bending vibrations. Infrared spectroscopy can be used to find out about covalent bonds in molecules. Here we show the delta of energy, which is equal to the Planck constant times the frequency. The frequency is represented with a V. We later have the Planck constant over 2 pi times the square root of the spring strength over the reduced mass. Spring strength represents the bond stiffness, while the reduced mass is, on average, the mass of the largest atom. As you can see, the frequency is directly proportional to the strength of the bonding between the two atoms, and it is inversely proportional to the reduced mass of the two atoms. Here we show the different types of criteria when we evaluate IR spectroscopy. So as the atom gets heavier, as you can see from hydrogen to deuterium to carbon, the frequencies or the bond energy decreases. This also means that the stretching frequencies, which is represented at centimeters over one, decrease. 
there is a de dependency on the bond energy as well. So single bonds to double bonds to triple bonds increase the strength of the bond, which increases the bond energy and also increases the stretching frequency. We can summarize it as the frequency decreases with increasing atomic weight and also frequency increases with increasing bond energy. Infrared radiation is largely thermal energy. It induces stronger molecular vibrations in covalent bonds, which can be viewed as springs holding together two masses or atoms. Specific bonds respond to or absorb specific frequencies. Here, we first provide the equilibrium bond length, which is the regular length that the bond will have. This bond can be stretched and can be compressed in an equilibrium of motion. The vibration modes. Covalent bonds can vibrate in several modes, including stretching, rocking, and scissoring. The most useful bands in an infrared spectrum correspond to stretching frequencies, and those will be the ones we'll focus on. IR radiation does not have enough energy to induce electronic transition, as seen with UV. If the frequency of the radiation matches the vibrational frequency of the molecule, then radiation will be absorbed, causing a change in the amplitude of molecular vibration. IR spectra are most commonly presented as percent light transmitted through a sample as a function of the wavelength or energy of the light. Samples that absorb all of the IR light would give a spectrum with a horizontal line near the bottom of the spectrum. When a chem chemical sample is exposed to the action of IR, IR light, it can absorb some frequencies and transmit the rest. Some of the light can also be reflected back to the source, as we show in here. From all the frequencies it receives, the chemical sample can absorb or retain specific frequencies and allow the rest to pass through or transmit. The detector detects the transmitted frequencies and by doing so also reveals the values of the absorbed frequencies. The IR spectrum is basically a plot of transmitted or absorbed frequencies versus intensity of the transmission or absorption. Frequencies appear in the x-axis in units of inverse centimeters or wave numbers and intensities are plotted in the, on the y-axis in percentage units. The graph above shows a spectrum in absorption mode. The graph above shows a spectrum in transmission mode. This is the most commonly used representation and the one found in most chemistry and spectroscopy books. Therefore, we will use this representation. IR bands can be classified as strong, S, medium, M, or weak, W, depending on the relative intensities in the infrared spectrum. A strong band covers most of the y-axis, a medium band falls to about half of the y-axis, and a weak band falls to about one-third or less of the y-axis. Not all covalent bonds display bands in the IR spectrum. Only polar bonds do so. These are referred to as IR active. The intensity of the bands depends on the magnitude of the dipole moment associated with the bond in question. Strongly polar bonds, such as carbonyl groups C double bond O, produce strong bands. Medium polarity bonds and asymmetric bonds produce medium bands. Weakly polar bond and symmetric bonds produce weak or non-observable bands. Infrared band shape comes in various forms. Two of the most common are narrow and broad. Narrow bands are thin and pointed, like a dagger. Broad bands are wide and smoother. A typical example of a broad band is displayed by the OH bonds such as those found in, in alcohol and carboxylic acid, as shown below. IR is most useful in providing information about the presence or absence of specific functional groups. IR can provide a molecular fingerprint that can be used when comparing samples. If two pure samples display the same IR spectrum, it can be arg argued that they are the same compound. IR does not provide detailed information or proof of molecular formula or structure. It provides information on molecular fragments, specifically functional groups. Therefore, it is very limited in scope and must be used in conjunction with other techniques to provide a more complete picture of the molecular, molecular structure. In the region from 1,500 to 400 centimeters to the minus one, vibrational frequencies are affected by the entire molecule, as the broader ranges for group absorption in the figure below, fingerprint region. Absorption in this fingerprint region is characteristic of the molecule as a whole. This region finds widespread use for identification purposes by comparison with library spectra. Although the entire IR spectrum can be used as a fingerprint, 
for the purposes of comparing molecules. The 600 to 1,400 centimeters to the minus one range is called a fingerprint region. This is normally a complex area showing many bands frequently overlapping each other. This complexity limits its use to that of a fingerprint and should be ignored by beginners when analyzing the spectrum. As a student, you should focus your analysis on the rest of the spectrum. That is the region to the left of 1,400 centimeters to the minus one. The typical IR absorption range for covalent bonds is 600 to 4,000 centimeters to the minus one. The graph shows the region of the spectrum where the following types of bond normally absorb. For example, a sharp band around 2,200 or 2,400 centimeters to the minus one would indicate the possible presence of a carbon-nitrogen or carbon-carbon triple bond. Here we provide a region from 3,500 3, to around 2,700 which indicates nitrogen and hydrogen bonding, oxygen and hydrogen bonding, and carbon and hydrogen bonding. There is a small region between 2000 and 2500 that represents the carbon-carbon triple bond and the carbon-nitrogen triple bond. A region be between 1600 and 1800 represents the carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen, and carbon-nitrogen double bonds. And then we have the fingerprint region. Alkenes have no functional groups. The IR spectrum displays only carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bond vibrations. Of these, the most useful are the CH bands, which appear around 3,000 cm minus 1. Since most organic molecules have such bonds, most organic molecules will display those bands in their spectrum. Here we can see a very strong peak around 3,000 that represents the carbon-hydrogen stretch. Then we have a medium strength uh, signal that represents the carbon-hydrogen bending. <coughs> this spectrum represents the hexanes. Besides the presence of carbon-hydrogen bonds, alkenes also show up sharp medium bands corresponding to the carbon double bond carbon bond stretching vibration at about 100, 600 to 1,700 centimeters to the minus one. Some alkenes might also show a band for the carbon proton from the double bond stretch, appearing around 3,800 centimeters to the minus one, as shown below. However, this band could be obscured by the brother bands appearing around 3,000. The spectrum shows that the band appearing around 3,080 centimeters to the minus one can be obscured by the brother bands appearing around 3,000. This spectrum corresponds to cis 2 octene. The most prominent band in alkynes corresponds to the carbon-carbon triple bond. It shows as a sharp, weak, weak band at around 2,100 centimeters to the minus one. The reason it's weak is because the triple bond is not very polar. In some cases, such as highly symmetrical alkynes, it may not show at all due to the low polarity of the triple bond associated with alkynes. Terminal alkynes, that is to say, those where the triple bond is at the end of the carbon chain, have CH bonds involving the sp carbon carbon that forms part of the triple bond. Therefore, they may also show a sharp, weak bond at around 3,300 centimeters to the minus one, corresponding to the CH stretch. Internal alkynes, that is those where the triple bond is in the middle of a carbon chain, do not have CH bonds to the sp carbon and therefore lack the aforementioned band. The following slide shows a comparison between an unsymmetrical terminal alkyne, one octyne, and a symmetrical internal alkyne, 4 octyne. Here we can compare both of them. And we can assess that the 4 octyne has no CH triple bond stretch, whereas our 1 octyne does. They both provide the alkane CH stretch of around 3000. And we can also assess this carbon triple bond carbon bond and the one octane are around 2,119, whereas for four octane, we don't have anything. In a manner very similar to alkynes, nitriles show a prominent band around 2,250 centimeters to the minus one caused by this carbon nitrogen triple bond. This band has a sharp pointed shape, just like the alkyne carbon carbon triple bond. But because the carbon nitrogen triple bond is more polar, this band is stronger than in alkynes. 
The most prominent band in alcohol is due to the OH bond, and it appears as a strong broad band covering a range of about 3,000 to 3,700 centimeters to the minus one. The sheer size and broad shape of the band dominate the IR spectrum and make it hard to miss. Here we can see it as a very broad belly, which represents the OH stretching. We also have the CH stretching from saturated carbon interactions. This represents the one butanol. We can also observe some interactions in the fingerprint region that correspond to the carbon oxygen stretch. Carbonyl compounds are those that contain the carbon double bond oxygen functional group. In aldehydes, this group is at the end of the carbon chain, whereas in ketones, it's in the middle of the chain. As a result, the carbon of the, in the CO bond of aldehydes is also bonded to another carbon and a hydrogen, whereas the same carbon in a ketone is bonded to two other carbons. Aldehydes and ketones show a strong prominent stake-shaped band around 1,710 and 1,720 centimeters to the minus one, right in the middle of the spectrum. This band is due to the highly polar carbon-oxygen bond. Because of its position, shape, and size, it is hard to miss. Because aldehydes also contain a carbon-hydrogen bond to the sp2 carbon of the carbon double bond oxygen bond, they also show a pair of medium-strength bands positioned about 2,700 and 2,800 centimeters to the minus one. These bands are missing in the spectrum of a ketone because the sp2 carbon of the ketone lacks the CH bond. The following slide shows the spectrum of an aldehyde and a ketone. Study the similarities and the difference so that you can distinguish between the two. Here we show butyraldehyde and 2 eptanone. Both of them show saturated CH stretches, around 3000. Nevertheless, there is a stretch that corresponds to the carbon hydrogen from the carbonyl of the butyraldehyde on top whereas our 2-eptanone does not provide it. Both of them have the carbon double bond oxygen stretch at around 1,700. A carboxylic acid functional group combines the features of alcohols and ketones because it has both the OH bond and the carbon double bond oxygen bond. Therefore, carboxylic acids show a very strong and broad band covering a wide range between 2,800 and 3,500 centimeters to the minus one for the OH stretch. At the same time, they also show the stake-shaped band in the middle of the spectrum around 1,710 centimeters to the minus one, corresponding to the carbon double bond oxygen stretch. Here we can see again our broad OH signal, which is interrupted also by the CH stretch right in the middle of it. We can also see the carbon double bond oxygen stretch on 1,700. This spectrum corresponds to exanoic acid. The most characteristic band in amines is due to the NH bond stretch, and it appears as a weak to medium somewhat broad band, but not as broad as the OH band of alcohols. This band is positioned at the end of the spectrum in the range of 3,200 and 3,600 centimeters to the minus one. Primary amines have two NH bonds, therefore they typically show two spikes that make this band resemble a molar tooth. Secondary amines have only NH bond, which makes them show only one spike, resembling a canine tooth. Finally, tertiary amines have no NH bonds, and therefore this band is absent from the IR spectrum altogether. The spectrum below shows a secondary amine, dipropylamine. Here we show the broad signal that corresponds to the NH stretch. We have only one spike, which credits for the fact that it's a secondary amine. And we have a very, very strong peak that corresponds to the CH stretch as 3000. We also have some signals on the fingerprint region. The amide functional group combines the features of amines and ketones because it has both the NH bond and the carbon double bond oxygen bond. Therefore, amides show a very strong, somewhat broad band at the left of the end of the spectrum, in the range between 3,100 and 3,500 centimeters to the minus one for the NH stretch. At the same time, they also show the stake-shaped band in the middle of the spectrum around 1,710 centimeters to the minus one for the carbon double bond oxygen stretch. As with the means, primary amides show two spikes, whereas secondary amides show only one spike. So we can see the NH stretch at around 3,000. 
we can see some of the CH stretches at around 3000. And we can also see the carbon double bond oxygen stretch that it is represented around 1630. This compound corresponds to the but butyrylamide. 